tutto il tema della best practice internazionale che adesso ospiteremo, la invito ringraziandolo naturalmente per il suo contributo a sedersi qui accanto a me. Ci ha offerto veramente tanti stimoli che varrebbe la pena approfondire con lei, non abbiamo tempo, però insomma ha pungolato non poco la categoria, anche perché il 2025 e dopo domani ho visto che ha assegnato i compiti con un grado di precisione chirurgica, tutto questo naturalmente affinché anche il nostro Paese possa diventare per questo comparto una best practice magari europea, se non addirittura internazionale. A proposito di questo, adesso ne ospitiamo una, e un operatore appunto che ha deciso di raccogliere in pieno le sfide che abbiamo elencato con Claudio Torcellan fino a questo momento. Abbiamo la testimonianza di Peter Anderson, Head of Saving and Advisory Transformation di Sweet Bank, che dovrebbe essere collegato con noi. Adesso vediamo se la regia ci agevola il collegamento con Mr. Anderson. Ovviamente Claudio Torcellan rimane con me perché conoscendo le mie competenze linguistiche abbiamo preferito. Eccolo qua. Mr. Anderson, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you very well. Ok, Torcellano, le lascio la conversazione. Peter, good afternoon and thank you for being here with us and, and welcome to this uh, uh, conference. Uh, quick, uh, quick update for you. I've tried to convince the audience of the opportunity to invest and to become a leader and the best practice uh, in, uh, in sustainable finance. And... Uh, we would love to hear from you that you are essentially, you have entirely repositioned your business around sustainability. Uh, why you have done this? And uh, secondly, what has changed since you have started the, the journey? Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon everyone. I will try to give you a, a peek from what we are up to in the Northern Europe, up in Sweden, and for those who don't know, Swedbank, we are the largest, largest uh, retail, or actually the largest bank in Sweden, and we have a, a relation with almost half of the population, all the way from a pure retail, all the way up to high net worth. And uh, we have taken some decisions lately, internally, or actually we have increased uh, or emphasized even more uh, old decisions to work even more with sustainability and that is what I will give you uh, uh, some insights into. Uh, what we have here and what we see, or at least what we see, is a lot of business opportunities driven by sustainable regulations and regulations in sustainability and I will uh, go through how we do that. We actually start all the way from the board of the bank that, that uh, they have uh, decided on a, on a vision that we should be a financially sound and sustainable society where Swedbank, that is us, empower the many people and businesses to create a better future. That is a fairly strong message that we keep on repeating in the, uh, throughout, the, uh, uh, throughout the country to uh, uh, you know, set and, and, uh, and transmit our position in this. And uh, I mean, why do we want to do this? Uh, it's of course to, to support the transformation that we need and see around the world. It's both about uh, uh, reorientation reorientating capital flows, uh, but also to build in uh, sustainability in all our risk management, and also with the impact we have on, on the population given our size, fostering a transparency and a long time view on these matters. And as I said, we have been working with sustainability for a long time, but now with the new reg legislation coming up, and, and I would say the, the movements we see in society, the speed and, and, and the stake is really increasing. And we have these three main areas that we focus, us, focus on right now. One is, of, of course, the taxonomy. And, and also, we have the different technical standard. And then we have the amendments to both MIFID and IDD. And we all uh, you know, take this very seriously. And, and we are trying to make business out of it. And as all of you know, the timeline of this is fairly short. Uh, and what we uh, particularly, particularly see as a challenge is to reach out to retail customers, explaining the complexity and possibilities each uh, individual and household actually have 
to to uh, to do what matter. And I think this is probably a key slide that uh, I hope everyone think should think quite a lot about the regulation. Yet they have provide a framework that the business themselves have, of course, to set the ambition level and. As we see this as a new mega trend, I mean, you, you want to be on top of it, not in the middle or in the lower end. And that is uh, uh, the ambition we have set for ourselves. To give some example, how we, how we for a long time had worked with sustainability within our app management. We have done this for almost 40 years now. We are one of the largest owners on the Swedish stock exchange and also one of the biggest asset managers in Sweden. So widely used, we can really uh, make a difference and we do that through inclusion, exclusion and engagement in all the companies uh, that we invest in. And uh, we were actually the first fund manager to launch a Paris Alliance Fund uh, last year. And uh, uh, we are continuing to develop our products to meet, uh, meet these new objectives. Uh, we are also the leading investor in uh, sustainable and green bonds. And we are also uh, expanding the usage of, of derivatives. What to say, uh, by, by going to this uh, net zero asset management, we see that we would reach a zero emission by 50 in, in the entire AUM that are in our hands. And uh, you can see some milestones. We have done this for a long time uh, and we will continue to do that. And we have set some clear goals for our climate strategy on the product side. So, already 2025, uh, we have our first objective. And as I said before, at 2040, we will be net zero. Uh, so the, it's a major transformation on how we uh, uh, manage the capital. Uh, what we are really proud of is uh, how we uh, approached it. Uh, we work both inclusion, uh, in that we are actually um, going to make uh, good companies even better or so and so good companies, really good. We of course also have an exclusion list in areas where we see that there is no demand for transformation, we should just exclude them. And in the investment we do, we have a very, very large engagement. And on top of this, we also create especially for everything that relates to the climate. And I will come back to why later. Just to give you a flavor on how we engage in the all the companies we invest in. We have uh, over 2,500 company meetings every year. We are uh, active in voting in the companies on the uh, annual meetings. Uh, we actually participated in, in almost 100 of them uh, on a yearly basis. We take use our uh, uh, votes to take a seat in the nomination committees, ensuring that we promote persons that really uh, drive for sustainability in, in everything. And we have an active dialogue both about the E, S and G in, in, in all the uh, interactions we have with these companies. And what we are focusing in on now is to uh, have the same ambition level in the distribution side both uh, triggered by uh, regulatory changes, but also to deliver on our vision. And, and the vision we have is to strengthen our brand and make our brand as a brand that people relate to sustain positive sustainability. We will uh, try to bridge the gap in society so with awareness and, uh, and create insight. We are also redefining uh, all interaction points with our customers to have sustainability uh, choices as the default mode instead of something you need to opt into. We have the ambition to be market leading for the uh, entire customer base, all the way from retail up to high net. And 
we are uh, um, we are trying to leverage uh, both the SDGs, the personalization, visualization, and customer insights into this work to ensure that we become as relevant as possible. This is just an example of where we uh, alter all our digital interfaces, and the idea is that it lifts sustainability in all interactions. So we will try to put this, this topics more or less in the face of everyone all the time to, to create awareness, insights, and also to trigger actions. We are working very intensely and all the time with different types of surveys uh, to ensure that we do the right thing and that we have our customer base behind us. And typically, we ask a question and investigate uh, how important how important is sustainability for our customer, and what type of sustainability is important, and what do the customer expect us to do? And I mean, to design the solutions together with the customer, I think is key, because if you are not relevant, you know, in the digital world, you are just uh, competitors are just one click away. So. We need to, to set it right uh, all the time in all the channels, and this we uh, uh, invest a lot in. And to give you a, fla if a flavor, is important. Is sustainability something important for for the Swedish uh, customers? And I would say yes. It's uh, very top of mind, eight out of ten. And that uh, we can also very clearly see uh, in, the, in the media landscape in Sweden, where Sustainability, you know, is is all over. It's a it's a mega trend at the moment, and we see a lot of opportunity here because you know, eight out of ten they want to invest in a sustainability sustainable way, but only three out of ten actually do. And the reason for this is probably uh, many, but uh, it's a complex 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 matter, and I think, or I, I know that many customers feel it's quite hard to get it right. And that is also one of the reasons where we are refining and retuning and investing a lot in our channels to aid the customer towards this type of, of, uh, of decision. And also within sustainability, what is actually important, and we can see uh, three areas that really sticks out. One is uh, biodiversity, the other one is, is climate impact, and the third one is human rights. And this very well reflect also uh, the main headlines we see in the, in the media uh, in, in the Nordics. But there's also a matter that are really uh, on the heart for exclusion. Uh, weapons is not a very popular investment uh, in Scandinavia, uh, nor is uh, adult entertainment. And also gaming and betting companies, uh, they have become uh, very popular uh, and we see a lot of uh, misuse. And that gets a lot of media attention and, and a lot of people are uh, you know, hesitant or really against investing into these uh, this type of, of exposures. To summarize this a bit, what are we, what should we do or what are we trying to do? Uh, we are really trying to, to go with and excel in the strong mega flow of sustainability that we see. Another topic that I think is especially important for the higher segment is to be perceived as a front runner for the, for the next generation private bank. I mean, you all know uh, that uh, sustainability matters are, even if it's strong in the entire population, it's even stronger in the younger ones. And uh, one of the long-term issues that, that we are trying to mitigate is the question, how do we keep the capital within Swedbank when we see shifting generations? So it's very important that the, the, the generation that will receive the wealth have a very good relation with us, see us as a, a forward-leaning, you know, hungry at the time supplier of financial services. 
So, and we use regulation to kind of leverage a bit on this because it's a good platform or baseline to start the interaction with the customer with and then expand with a much higher ambition. And what we see lately now is also that uh, uh, we see that, that everything related to ESG will outperform non ISG uh, investments. So now we are also refocusing our asset allocation model and also our portfolio construction to, to pick up this, not only for the sake of sustainability, but also for performance. And I think this uh, performance issue together with uh, to capture the next generation are very strong drivers uh, from a business perspective when we meet uh, our higher segments. And to, to meet this from a more technical side, we are investing in a totally new advisory platform. Uh, and we have set very high guidelines related to sustainability in this new implementation. So we have the challenge to uh, um, empower the, the, the customers with insights and knowledge to make good decisions. Uh, we are to say we're very specific that we want to meet the entire customer base, not only early adopters. We have a high ambition level. We want to be uh, the best. Uh, and uh, uh, creating frameworks is something that, uh, that create uh, you know, a, a, an environment where we can steer and run our business within. And this together, uh, we, we feel and know based on the insight work we do will be a very attractive uh, patch and, uh, or uh, solution for our uh, for our customers and and to to give some examples on how we are, how we are launching this is that the entire uh, perception of the service that that we provide both in a physical meeting but even more in in the digital are flavored and are dominated by different perspectives of, uh, of uh, sustainability. And we are also building in a lot of sustainability measures in all the performance related reports and, and monitors that, that, that we give to our customers. So when we, for example, provide uh, performance reports and also when we pre prepare strategy meeting and follow up meetings and so on, we are now adding a lot of sustainable values in those reports and start to lift that topic as well as the pure performance and risk. So this was a glimpse. Uh, we are taking this very seriously. It's one of uh, Swedbank's biggest investments uh, for a long time to make this uh, transformation towards a sustain more sustainable society. We try to deliver on all the aspects both on the product level, on the distribution level, and, uh, and we span both the E, S, and G to, uh, to, to be fairly complete. And it's a big task. It has some clear milestones, but it will drastically alter the way we meet and advise customers uh, for, for the uh, foreseeable future. Uh, Peter, thank you very much. I, I guess we have finished the time available, but it has been very, very interesting and relevant to, to see where the best practices are now uh, doing and what they, what they already achieved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your, your vision, first of all. Tra l'altro faccio solo l'ultimo commento con Claudio Torcellan se lo ritiene poi dobbiamo correre verso la prossima parte del nostro evento. C'è un punto che mi ha colpito delle considerazioni che Anderson ha fatto, ha detto la regolazione è il framework naturalmente all'interno della quale ci si deve muovere ma questo non impedisce all'industria di avere delle ambizioni più alte. Sì, credo sia la parte interessante dell'intervento, si è visto quanto loro hanno spinto lì sopra, quindi... Il messaggio è chiaro, anche i clienti del, dei paesi del nord che sono comunque un livello di attenzione alla sostenibilità più alta devono essere stati educati, quindi loro hanno fatto tutto un mestiere per spiegargli come andare verso quegli investimenti 
e hanno montato tutta una macchina di consulenza e poi di monitoraggio degli investimenti che spingeva in quella direzione. Quindi eh certo. anche loro è, hanno è un il percorso problema. che non, non, non autogemma, cioè va spinto. E anche loro hanno il problema di un cliente che non capisce il link diretto che può esserci fra la sostenibilità e il risparmio, devono essere, lo ha detto chiaramente in ultima parte, indirizzati. Grazie a Claudio Tocciano. Grazie mille. Grazie mille.